Before I begin, I want you to visualize the following image. A girl. She is laid down in a hospital bed, needles stuck into the veins of her arms and a heart monitor, checking her heart for any abnormalities. Nurses come and go, checking on her state occasionally. This poor girl with the desperate eyes and sunken cheeks. She looks gaunt, her body almost disappearing into the bedding. If it weren't for her parents, she would probably already be dead. This girl, she has an eating disorder, and eating disorders are deadly. Anorexia nervosa is associated with the highest mortality rates of any psychiatric illness. Once a disorder has clamped its jaws into you, it is a dangerous beast and it will not let go. Recovery is challenging. I know this because I have lived through this. The image I just described, that girl, that was me. Like many others, I did not speak up and I did not seek help. I may have never done had it not been for my parents who forced me into treatment. For many, seeking treatment makes them feel uncertain and ashamed, and I know it did for me. Many struggling individuals do not have access to relevant information. They do not acknowledge their illness or its severity or they may not want to disclose very personal eating-related behaviours with anyone else. For these reasons, they subsequently opt to manage their own struggles independently, and many seek help online. However, UK health information, both on and offline, is too complex for about half of the working age adults in the UK. If online readability is low, Readers may feel alienated and unable to understand the information. If online quality is suboptimal, readers may be unable to make substantiated treatment decisions. Moreover, if the readability and the quality are inconsistent, these varying levels can be confusing to navigate. It can be difficult to find the sources that are good and to set them apart from those that aren't and this worsens outcomes for already vulnerable individuals. Nevertheless, research in this area is simply non-existence. It has never been previously examined. Whereas studies have looked at the danger of anorexia promoting or pro-ana websites, as well as the usefulness of online anorexia interventions, no studies have evaluated the quality and readability of simple um, information only websites that tend to be the first thing to check out for people that are struggling or their families. Meanwhile, eating disorders are thought to be becoming more prevalent in certain parts of the world. The problem remains and in fact seems to be growing. We decided to help. We decided to fill this gap in the literature. We decided to investigate information quality and readability of anorexia-related information online using standardized methods. We decided to shed light on a topic that could help those who are struggling with life-threatening eating disorders, to help them find the resources that are useful, and to help them make sense of the information. If we wouldn't do it, who would? What would prevent these individuals from remaining trapped in the jaws of that eating disorder? So, we investigated. We analysed first page search results of the three most commonly used search engines. And we analysed them for quality and for readability. Our findings were shocking. Quality scores varied tremendously with information about risks and benefits of different treatment options, oftentimes lacking. In addition, text difficulty tended to be way too difficult for a lay audience. This could have severe negative implications for health outcomes of those struggling, being associated with increased hospitalizations, decreased protective behaviors, and higher mortality rates. 
for an illness that already has the high mortality rates of any mental health disorder. This is alarming. Quality seals, ratings made by volunteers and displayed on the home pages of these websites, could prove tremendously beneficial. During my eating disorder, had I known which sources to access and how to use them and what information to take from them, this would have helped me so much. Maybe I wouldn't have been that girl trapped in the hospital bed. Maybe I would not have fallen that deep. Maybe I would not have struggled as much. Maybe I would have recovered faster. But that's a lot of maybes. What matters most is that this can become a possibility in the future. Now that the problem is on the radar, we need to draw attention to it. Maybe in the future, we can ensure website quality and readability at optimal levels for those who are struggling, as I did in the past. This could save lives.